acquiring power. Power relationships or power itself is something that can't be done as an individual. Even though we have power over our collective body, which is up to five, six, seven trillion cells, we have power as far as how we act and react in this world, you know. You could choose whether you want to sit down, whether you want to get up. You could choose your destiny. You could put energy towards your destiny every single day. You have time, 24 hours in that day to determine and decide what you're going to do. And you might have results. You might either be successful or you might fail. But the act of doing it demonstrated that you have power over your own life. And you have power over the obstacles that you face. And a lot of times the, ob the obstacles, the only thing hindering you from facing or going through those obstacles is courage. And courage is a way for you to determine uh, whether it's appropriate or safe to pursue your uh, destiny in that particular situation. Or you could go through it with courage and get over it or you might be defeated. But the uh, idea that something very dangerous might happen or you might end up in a situation that you might not want to be in like a choice could lead you in a penitentiary but power shows that you have control over all of those aspects you could choose not to go in a situation you could choose to, to go in a situation and to face whatever consequences that's power as an individual but power as a group when dealing with other people it's all based on relationships and it's based on honor, acceptance. You know, if the masses of people honor you and accept you, then they will give you collectively energy in which you actually harness that energy and use it for power. You know, you can use it to uh, purchase yourself a house in a Caucasian controlled community. You could buy a Bentley, a BMW. Because power is action, activity. You know, you power a car, the car is driving. The car is not driving, then it's not power. You know, energy being combusted in a cycle, in a, in a, in a uh, mechanism to move forward, backwards, or whatever. Or to go up if it's, a, if it's, a, if it's an engine, in a, engine designed for flying or you have engines that submerge underground into the water but you need power to get that thing to happen so power happens in all aspects of life and it's all based on a relationship between one thing and the other thing when it comes to the individual it's you your will your thoughts your mind and it's your body and then having the energy and being able to be fit enough to be able to make those things happen but this relationship between you your body and the condition of the body when you look at a group, the group acts as a body, a collective. And power is always something that is contained and harnessed, like to be poured into a, a body. Like you contain a, a, a bottle of gasoline. You, you transport that gasoline into the vehicle. You pour that, vehicle, that gasoline into the vehicle, then the vehicle power up to move you and whoever inside of that vehicle to their destination. So, what I'm talking about with acquiring power is the so-called Negro is a group, an individual. Uh, at least 50 million pieces, individual pieces to this group. And each individual piece has energy. But the group itself doesn't really move forward in a concerted effort or a design effort because the energy is not harnessed as a single group. The energy is dispersed into other groups of people outside of this particular group in order to assist them in their forward movement and their conquest. And the psychological uh, deficiencies that happen from this is when the individual groups of this group disperse their energy to other groups or hostile other hostile groups these other hostile groups then take your energy to destroy and conquer you to gentrify you 
to annihilate you with your own energy that you voluntarily gave to them because they made you believe that giving them your energy is beneficial to you. Symbolically, you get to walk around with a Louis Vuitton symbol, a Gucci symbol, or you can have a status symbol as a uh, Nike. You can have a, a U.S. bank a card, uh, American Express. If you're lucky, a black card, you know, if, you, if you're on that level. But those things only help to empower outside groups and entities who are not friendly, who are not allies, who are hostile to your demise. Because if they were friendly, they would be putting money into your institutions. They would be giving your, you energy, your group energy, to, your, to help your forward progress. Similar to how Vice President Kamala Harris was just in Guatemala discussing immigration and how Joe Biden and them give billions of dollars to foreign groups or how they spend billion of dollars, billions of dollars at the southern border for illegal immigrants, transporting them, bringing them to housing and whatnot, giving them money and access to opportunities and housing and jobs. These people are given these other groups resources because they are friendly and allies to them, particular other groups. But if they don't give the same resources or assistance to the so-called Negro, then they are hostile. Even though they're taking your tax dollars, the IRS, the uh, state governments, the city or municipalities, the, the counties, and whatever, taking your resources and allocating it to non, to other groups so they can take over your communities. And then when you actually put money into these institutions, these banks, Citibank, uh, US Bank, Bank of America, Chase, whatever, Wells Fargo, these banks end up financing uh, management companies, uh, real estate companies, who intend to develop and, and gentrifying your community evicting you kicking you out using the money that you put into these banks so to acquire power on a on a basic level is to for the so-called negro to realize that for one they're only powerful as a group they're only powerful if the group can move as a single as a, as a single entity otherwise you're just power you're just gasoline for other groups you're just energy used by other groups parasites to empower themselves you're voluntarily hooking yourself up into a blood donor machine while they sucking your blood dry using your organs using your resources to to annihilate you by giving you nothing in return so in order for the so-called negro to exercise power on a basic level they will have to un unite on a, on a unified front put their money into their own institutions their own banks you could find a bank on the internet, and I can name two banks, two black-owned banks who offer online banking, in which you never have to go into a branch. You could just do it online on your app. The first bank is called uh, One United Bank. I think it's One United Bank. Let me look, because I have a, an account with them. This is one of the biggest banks in America, one of the biggest black owned banks, but they're just 100% online. You can open an account quick. Hold on, I'm going to find it for you. One United Bank. One United Bank. Yeah, One United Bank. The second bank that you could, that, that offer online only, some, if you don't have, if you're not close to one of their, Locations is Liberty Liberty Bank and Trust Company. Liberty Bank and Trust Company. Now, you could put an account. You could open an account and put a couple of hundred dollars into this account. On an on on individual level, you might say that's nothing. But on a massive level, if a million people was to do this, this bank will be in a better position to assist you in financing whatever endeavor that you have, be it a business endeavor, be it a mortgage or whatever. 
and also this bank will be able to finance real estate into your own community refinance uh, the development they could be able to donate to schools it, it, this this thing right here if the so-called Negro was to harness their power towards something singular like this or just go to either this bank the other bank or whatever just find a black bank and put your money into it these banks will be powerful enough to really change your environment and to help a lot of people and to hire a lot of people because they can open up more branches but it's really uh, money money is the way people get things done action gets done with money power is money so power and money is intertwined in that aspect you can't think about having all these dreams and marching really when you marching talking about black lives matter and whatnot you're really asking the government to give money to you because you know money is going to be essential for your forward progress you're talking about reparations but reparations happens only by force after the war is won then you force the, the next nation to give reparations in exchange for them not being uh, destroyed or annihilated that's how Germany was forced to pay reparations after World War One. After losing World War One, they was forced to pay reparations. And then when they lost World War Two, they was forced to pay reparations also to the so-called Jews. But you cannot get the only the only position we had in which we could have demanded reparations was when we won a civil war. We was militarily superior to the Confederate Army and to the United States Army. And them 20 years after the Civil War was over during Reconstruction, that was the only time in this country's history in which we was in a position to leverage to reparations out of this government. And that's actually when the first Civil Rights Act was passed. And that's when a lot of promises was made, 40 acres and a mule. But as time progressed and as Negroes became more liberal and talking about tent, talented tent and integration, and being uh, turned the other cheek and being soft, effeminate, that's when a government and a Caucasian race reestablished themselves as a powerful nation while the so-called Negroes sacrificed their position of strength. And now we have to beg them and at, the, at their mercy, at their benevolence to just decide to give something to you, whether than you, other than you just forcing it and taking it from them militarily or with the threat of military, you know, they don't fear the so-called black race. That's why they're not uh, bending to your will. That's why they're bending to the will of the Chinese and the Asians because they fear China and Korea. You know, they fear North Korea. They fear India. They fear these massive, powerful... They fear Russia, but they don't fear you. You know, you have to force that, but instead of focusing on something that'll never happen because you don't have the, the military prowess to force them to make it happen, we could do something that requires no violence, no force, nothing. All it requires is a choice. And you can choose to go to these black institutions, these black financial institutions, and empower them. And once they're empowered, then you'll be in a better a position of strength to demand whatever from the so-called government. Or we'll be in a position to create our own government with money. Because China, they they purchasing most of the United States without even being a, a, a military force. They just have the money, the resources. So money can substitute uh, physical force. If you have the money, you could just use it as a collective to purchase what you want. And then a lot of these foreign uh, countries, they purchase these Democrats. They purchase these politicians. They purchase people to do their will in government. They call them lobbyists, but to acquire power is to first take over control of your money and use that money as a collective uh, tool to empower your own group 